boys and girls. My name is teacher Rebecca, and I'll be taking you through the memory verse. As you all know, our memory, uh, our theme for the VBS this April, it's about being prepared. Being prepared for what? Being prepared for the coming of Christ, because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. And so our memory verse today is coming from the book of Luke. The book of Luke is in the Bible. And we always say that the Bible is the word of God. This is the Bible, the word of God. And the word of God was written by different men. The Bible, uh, uh, we all know, and the Bible also says that the Bible, that is the word of God, was written by different men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, whoever liked or the man who wrote the book of Rook, he was inspired of the Holy Spirit. Boys and girls, can you remember what we always say? That the book or the Bible was written by different characters. These people held different, maybe positions, all different, they used to do different things. Like, we have people who are our prophets, we have the kings, we have the shepherds, we have farmers, we have fishermen, and we have doctors. And boys and girls, did you know that the book of Luke was written by a doctor? Yes, Luke was a doctor because the book of Luke was written by Dr. Luke. The book of Luke is in the New Testament. As we always say, that our Bible is divided into two parts the Old and the New Testament. And the book of Luke is in the New Testament. The book of Luke is the third book of the Gospel, or the third book of the New Testament. Our memory verse is from Luke 16 and verse 26. Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. And what does our memory verse say? And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone close over from there to us. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. I say it again. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. It says, and beside all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone close over from there to us. Luke 16, verse 26. What does that tell us? What is a gulf? What is a chasm? The Bible says that uh, this is a big or like a gap or a gulf or a valley, a very big valley that separates heaven and hell. It is set in between. And as you can see in my picture, there is a very big chasm. This is heaven and this is hell. So this is the gulf or a very big valley. So once you are in hell, it's not possible to cross over to heaven. And once you are in heaven, you cannot be able to cross over to hell because of this gulf. It means that this gulf, it is permanent, it is fixed, it is permanent, so it cannot be moved. That means once you die and go to hell, you remain in hell. Once you die and you've gone to heaven, you remain in heaven because that gap cannot be removed. And we cannot get any bridge. There is no bridge that can be able to cover this chasm. There is no bridge that you can put in between these valleys because nothing can fit. It is impossible. It tells us that in this place, those who are 
in hell will remain in hell. Those who are in heaven will remain in heaven. So there is no way that we can pass this chasm. Or there is no way we can pass through this valley. Because hell and heaven are way apart. So even though someone is in hell and feels they want to change their minds, and um, they want to close over, they say, now I need to change my mind. I cannot, this is not a good place to be. Because hell is a place of torment. There is no way that this person will be able to go back to heaven. If you are in heaven and say, mm, I don't think I'll be comfortable, I don't think I made the right decision, you can no longer go to hell. Because once you die, forever dead. Once you die, you will not be able to say anything, or there is nothing that you can, nothing you can change. Um, so with this gulf, the only way that you can change your mind, it's now. This is the time when you are alive, that you can be able to change your mind to where you want to be. This is the time you can make a decision because you cannot make a decision when you are dead. And how do you make a decision? The Bible tells us the only thing that separates us with God is sin. Sin separates us with God. And it's like sin, it is the one that is in between the valley or the gulf. So sin separates us with God. And now that you can hear the word of God, and now that you are alive, you can. This is the only time that you can change by repenting your sin. So if you're living in sin on this side of hell, then like this man who is up there, when you repent before you die, when you are alive, then you can be able to close over to God's side. And how do you do that? Very simple. Boys and girls, Jesus Christ died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he became the bridge that we can be able to close over from the side of sin to the side of God. So it's only now that you are alive that you can be able to make the decision for by closing over. Because when Jesus died, he became the bridge. And so you can accept him and tell him to forgive your sins because sin separates us with God. And then you can close over to the side of God. But I remind as I remind you again, once you die, you cannot change your mind. So you will remain, if it's hell, you will remain in hell. So boys and girls, we can remind ourselves about the memory verse again. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So this is the time, boys and girls, to make a decision. You tell Jesus to come to your life so that you not enter to hell, so that you will live with him in heaven forever and never because hell is a place of torment so if you'd like to give your life to jesus you can just say a very simple prayer lord jesus i know i'm a sinner and i need the savior i pray that you may forgive my sins and love my name from the book of hell and light it in the book of life in jesus name amen if you have made that prayer today Know that you are saved and you are forever set for the side of heaven, no longer on the side of hell. So, lastly, we will say our memory verse. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who cannot go, uh, who want to go from here to you, cannot, nor can anyone close over from there to us. Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. God bless you. God keep you. Bye-bye. Hi, boys and girls. I'm excited to see you today. Are you? Are you excited to see me? I, I, I hope you are. I am Tisha Angie, and I'll be taking you through the story, a very interesting story of Lazarus and the rich man. 
we'll start by a word of prayer because as a child of God, you should pray in the morning, you should pray in the afternoon, and you should also pray in the evening or any time you feel like. So we will pray. God, God, we come before your presence, thanking you for a gift of life and thanking you for this opportunity. <clears throat> we glorify your name, identifying that you're Alpha and the Omega. We pray that you guide us through our lesson and be able to be good children, to be good children of God. We worship you and we glorify your mighty name, praying and believing. Amen. Are you excited? Because I am. Uh, our story will be coming from the book of Luke. The book of Luke is in the third, is the third book of the New Testament. And we will be talking about two people. Who are these two people? The rich man and Lazarus. This is the rich man. What do we mean by being rich? By being rich, you own, you own big cars, you own a mansion, you have a lot of food. Are you rich? Because we are rich. Are you? I hope you are. But if you're not, there's no problem because God is the provider. This is a rich man. This is the rich man in the Bible. And this rich man has very many friends and very close associates. And he is smartly dressed. Those days, nowadays we dress in suits. We are very smart. But th these days, rich men used to be this smart. So this rich man had a lot of food to eat. Like you know, uh, you can take, you can have a big, you can have a lot of fruits, lot of food, a lot, a lot of foods, and a lot of food. You know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. <clears throat> Who's this? We talked about the rich man and the poor man. The poor man was called Lazarus. Lazarus was very tiny, very poor, and had nothing to eat. What can we see behind? What we can see behind is a very big mansion, and he used to be at the gate of the rich man. Why does he look like this? Ask yourself those questions. Because it is not right. He is outside the mansion, and we saw the rich man we talked about being him rich, but he could not assist Lazarus. Is that nice? As a child of God, you see beggars at the streets. You see chokoras, you know what chokoras are, street children, but do you help them? As a child of God, it is right. It is right to help them, because that is what, that is our main principle in, on earth, okay? I hope you, you help the, the poor. And if not, do you preach to them? Do you tell them about the coming of Jesus? Do you tell them that Jesus died on the cross for us? Do you tell them that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Are you a good Christian? Are you a good child? Are you? Tell that to mommy and daddy. Answer them. Tell them about how good you are and how good you, your character is. Are you a, a good example? I hope you are. So back to the story. Are you already excited to know what happened to Lazarus and the rich man? The wages of sin is death. There's a verse in the Bible. You'll tell me next time what that verse is. The wages of sin is death. And at the end of eternity, our at the end of life, here on earth, we will all die. You will die, I will die, your mommy, daddy, and your friends, we will die. And if we don't die, Jesus will come into earth. And what must you do? You must be prepared for Jesus is coming. And how, how do we prepare ourselves? By seeking God's help, by being saved, and by being a good child. Okay? Okay. I know you're excited, 
So on our next class, we will know what happened to the rich man and Lazarus. See you next time.